Hello and welcome to Post to Post, the channel where we discuss all things hockey. I am back again with uh, Justin and Jason for another video. Uh, this is our third of the day, I think, or fourth, or I don't even, I don't even remember. We've been on a roll here. So this video is going to be about uh, potential rule changes in the NHL in the near future. So Jason has a, a list of a couple topics here for us. He's going to explain and, and feel to us and we'll me Justin and I are going to uh, discuss it so I'll hand it off to you Jason all right so these are five questions taken from the hockey news who uh, published them and just said uh, you may not agree with all of them these are just potential they're not ideas being thrown out it's just what they would like to see and we'll throw them at you guys to see what you think okay so the first question we'll talk about is one that was actually talked about in the GM meetings and we'll start with you I guess okay and that's just about no timeouts after an icing call no timeouts after an icing call. Yeah, um, this is, uh, I think this is an acceptable change because it's easy to implement. I think we were kind of discussing this a little mm. bit earlier. It's easy to implement. Uh, there's no learning curve here. It's a, It speeds up the game a, a little bit maybe, and it eliminates the chance for a team to get that little bit of a recovery and maybe adds... A little more scoring potentially if yeah. like I, you know who who knows i guess that's the idea behind it is that, that they don't want to get too much rest and give the the team an opportunity to to put the puck in the net a little easier maybe so mm. yeah the nhl is looking at minor tweaks that they can make very easily implement easily in order to try to bring scoring up in the league but you know, with this, would it really bring up scoring that much? I mean, how many times in a season do we see a team call a timeout because they just ice the puck after being pinned in their own zone for, say, you know, 60, 90 seconds, whatever. Yeah. Guys are tired, bang, they ice the puck, take their timeout, and go from there. It doesn't happen a whole lot, but, hey, it's something that can be implemented, as you say, you know, very quick, very easily. And to be honest, I'd be all for it. Yeah. I mean, if a team is pinned in your own zone, Good. Stay pinned in your own zone. That's, yeah. that's just part of the game, you know? Exactly. And it's an excitement level too, like with fans in attendance. Like if, if the opposition gets pinned in the zone for, say, 90 seconds, fans are at the, on the edge of their seat, like just waiting for something to happen, you know, a goal to be scored or whatnot. So, no, I'd be all for this one. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm okay with this change. Yep. Okay. So we'll start with you for this one. Sure. It's kind of a continuation. This one's a little more extreme than the last one. Uh, no icings on a penalty kill. Poof. Yeah, that would be very extreme because then if you're killing a penalty, every time you'd be forced to advance, try to advance the puck. And chances are, since you're already you know outnumbered on the ice, uh, you're going to turn that puck over. But again, you know, they're trying to find ways that can increase scoring in the league. And to me, this one, I think, would just be way over the top, way over the top, yeah, because it would also create the potential of your penalty killers being on the ice for the entire penalty kill, mm -hmm. really, if you can't ice the puck down the ice, it would it would be exciting for fans. But I mean, uh, sometimes I watch games and and it happens with every team. They go on the power play and they just can't get in the zone. They just can't set up, yeah. and it's, uh, it's it's boring. So I think maybe this is just a small step, maybe just to create a little bit more excitement. Mm. And if you know if they do get into the zone and they ice the puck, then. Now that's that's not allowed anymore. So it comes right back into the zone, and just to yeah. provide that little bit more of excitement for the fans, a little bit more opportunity to score. Uh, but like you said, I think this is maybe just a little bit over the top. Yeah, uh, it is. And I'd prefer that to be left alone. Yeah. What do you think about them removing the trapezoids by the net? Um, trapezoids by the net. Two hours later. I think I'm probably okay with that. Um, it's it'll definitely change things, but it's not. I don't know. It's it'd be interesting to see a, one game with that change, just so I could have a little bit of an opinion. But uh, I don't know if I have a strong enough opinion to to really make a a go at this one. But I think I'd be okay with it. Yeah. No. Uh... I mean, with the trapezoid, you know, and the goalies being only able to play the yeah. puck within the trapezoid, uh, you know, I kind of like that rule because it kind of eliminates the goalie from playing the puck quite as much. But yeah, I mean, it's still directly behind the net, so the goalie's going to be able to play the puck a lot. But if that's gone, I mean, would that instantly say, okay, the goalie can no longer play the puck behind the net? Like, I think we'd almost need maybe a little more insight on that one. Yeah. Maybe. But 
Can you imagine if they did take away the ability for the goalie to play the puck behind the net? It'd be interesting. I'd like wow. to see a game, just, just one game, just to see that in play. Yeah, because, I mean, goalies today, they're so good at handling the puck, minus Marc-Andre Fleury. Um, <laughs> you know, it would be very interesting to see. Can you imagine if they took away that ability for the goalie to stop that puck? Say, you know, the, uh, the other team's going on power play, okay? They dump the puck in at the blue line. How often does the goalie stop that puck behind exactly. the net and bang, it's all the way up ice within a second or two? Exactly, yeah. Imagine if you took away that ability. And then instantly, when that puck is shot in, it's staying in mm-hmm. because the goalie can no longer play it. Mm-hmm. It'd be interesting. Mm. What do you think about uh, a rule where it kind of says score by any means necessary? So kick pucks, pucks directed purposely off helmets, gloves, things like that. You know, there's a part of me that says, you know, this would be great. Um, you know, it's it's kind of like soccer. You know, you know, you can use other body parts besides just your feet, right? Um, the only thing I would... Uh, speak strongly against would be the kicking because these things are razor sharp skates are razor sharp like how often do you see players get cut where the skate just seems to graze the player say on the back of his leg and the calf and um, you know the Achilles tendon how many times have we seen those cut in the league now imagine if players are willingly kicking at pucks that are in the crease there's somebody laying in the crease that's fallen on the play and you got another guy coming in and just kicking like crazy trying mm-hmm. to get that puck in the net because the stick's tied up Wow, that could be a really dangerous situation. Yeah, definitely. So outside of feet and kicking it in the net, you know, I'd be okay with, you know, say a player purposely swinging his arm to try to deflect a puck, let's say. And say if it's right at like crossbar level, you know, maybe you could say, well, be the same rule of, okay, if your stick's above the crossbar, then, okay, it's no good. Chances Mm -hmm. are a lot of players, if their elbow's up, it would be above the crossbar. But, you know, hands, that's another thing. Like puck's coming through and a player just bats it in. I mean, geez, that's a real tough one, especially if, say, they close their hand on the puck and then basically, you know, throw it. Uh, I think that would be horrible, to be honest. So I'm really on the fence with that one. But, uh, yeah, the kicking, uh, they have to keep that out. I, I'm kind of in the opposite opinion here. I, I definitely agree with the, you know, the skates being sharp and mm. stuff. Last night, uh, Atkinson got a skate at the back of the shoulder. He got 16 stitches last night. There you go. So it's obviously dangerous, but I think it'd be interesting to see to, to being able to kick into the net. I think I'm, I'm okay with that, mm. and that might not be the popular opinion, but I, uh, I think that would be interesting. But uh, the hand, like you, to hit it with your hand or to grab it and throw it or whatever, right. I don't... That I don't think that would ever be allowed, and but I'm okay with like an arm or a shoulder or a head mm. or a butt or whatever you want to use. I th- yeah. I'm okay with it unless you elaborate it on on it a little bit and say, okay, yeah, you can kick it in the net, but as long as you're in the crease, there's no kicking, uh, just okay. for safety reasons. You know, say if there's a puck coming in and you know you're not gonna be able to reach it in time because your stick's tied up, so you instantly swing your foot to kick it. Mm. You know, by the face-off circle. You know, that, that'll be allowed, but say if you're kicking right in the crease area, no, <laughs> mm. somebody could get really hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the last one's kind of a hot topic issue with people on both sides. So it's about removing the loser point and secondary question. Like if there was, that's a, for the question B would be only getting one point for an overtime win slash shootout win. And the other team gets nothing. And I just want to read one fact before you guys answer. Okay. And it says nice. separation between the 8th and 13th place team in the East is five points right now. With removing the loser point, the separation would be six points. And in the West right now, the 8th and 13th place teams, there's a difference of six. Removing the lo- loser point would make it eight. Hmm. And then we'll let you close this final question. Interesting. I, you know, There's been a lot of discussion about this in the past probably 10 years. It's, you know, it... I think before it was each team got one point for a tie. Mm. I don't know how long ago that was. Maybe seems like ages. Now. Yeah, it seems like forever <laughs> ago. But there's been discussion of if you win in regulation, you get three points. Mm-hmm. If you win in overtime, you get two points. And if you lose in overtime, you get one point or whatever. It yeah. is. I mean, there's so many ideas being floated around, and I I don't like the loser point system, but I think it's the most efficient system. So I'm. That's probably the unpopular opinion as well, but I I I do like it more than what it was before. Mm-hmm. So I'm okay with it. I don't like the loser point. I really don't because on an 82 game season, if you made it to overtime all 82 games, you're finishing the season with 82 points. Is that enough to get in to the playoffs? Almost, to be mm-hmm. honest. So 
you could have lost all 82 games and still have a shot at the playoffs. But I mean, come on. Yeah. I, <laughs> the probability of that happening is like probably less than winning the lotto. Mm. But my big beef with it is, okay, I've lost the game, but yet I'm still being awarded a point. Is that right? I don't think so. I think teams should just be playing for the two points. Okay. If you win in overtime, two points, you win shootout, two points. The other guy gets nothing. But then the other argument is, okay, well, right now with the loser point system, the league is probably more competitive than it's ever been. If you look at the standings from top to bottom, the mm-hmm. point separation, it's not very great. And within a weekly basis, on a weekly basis, the standings can change significantly just on a two to three game stretch. Whereas one team wins three, this guy loses two, instantly he's leapfrogged two teams yeah. because it's so close yeah and it makes it very exciting down the stretch and a lot of times in the past years we haven't seen uh playoff uh predicaments lock in place until the final two games of the season Mm. that's how close it's been but i just hate the loser point system and being awarded points for losing a game and i I don't like it i think that's why i like it because i i like how competitive it's it's uh you know forced the teams to be Mm. in in the, the standings and everything but i I don't know who made this as a suggestion originally. I don't know what broadcaster or what analyst or whoever, but the three points for a win in regulation, two points for a win in, in overtime, and uh, one point for a loss in overtime. I think winning in regulation and getting three points mm-hmm. would reward you know the better right. teams who can get it done in, in regulation. And I think that would add a little bit more separation to the standings, but also keep things competitive what do you think about that well that's interesting too but again you know you're going to be seeing teams potentially finish a year with 140 points with something like that i mean that point total is just unheard of you know um but again (laughs) i'd almost want to see more games go to overtime just because the three on three is so damn exciting that's true you know and i'd be a little sad to see so many games ending in regulation because if there's three points on the line teams are going to be playing insanely hard to Mm -hmm. end this before it go it gets to overtime but me, the fan, will be saying, no, I want this to go to overtime because then we got three-on-three three hockey. Yeah, that's it's, a good point. It's so exciting. Um, you know, if anything, just get rid of the shootout, stick with three-on-three three overtime, but that's another topic for another day. Yeah. Love the three-on-three. Three. Yeah. So just a follow-up question that this is not planned, but would you prefer to see the system we have now where everything is close down the stretch, or would you rather see a system where teams are rewarded for drafting properly and kind of bring back that dynasty era? Yeah, I mean, the NHL has a, a thing right now where they reward mediocrity. Okay, you're the first, uh, excuse me, you're the last in the league. Okay, your chances of landing that first overall pick have just gone through the roof. So basically, you're having franchises deciding to tank a season just to try to better themselves. Is that the way it should be? Is that the way we as sports fans should be looking at a league to say, hey, if we do bad, we will eventually be good? Is that the way we should be viewing it? Yeah. I don't think so. It's, it's a bit of an issue. I really don't think so. It should just be a toss-up, you know, every year. And I really think that if a team finishes very strong at the end of the season, their chances should be good to land a draft pick. And it'll force teams, in my opinion, to play better than what they may even be capable of. And it'll get rid of tanking on purpose to try to better their franchise. Mm. I'm yeah. just not a fan of rewarding mediocrity. In there, a sports league. There's even sayings being thrown out for different players. Like a few years ago, it was, <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what it was. It was Yeah, they used to have those catchphrases like all tank the time. tank for someone or whatever. Yeah, tank for Hank. If there was a guy yeah. named Hank, you yeah. know, that might go first and overall. That, that's how big of a thing it was is because it was it was pretty clear that, you know. Maybe oh, yeah, teams, teams were doing it on purpose. purpose. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, you look at the Oilers, how many first overall picks have they had in a five-year stretch? My yeah. goodness. Oh, fail for nail. Yeah, yeah fail, for nail. fail for nail. Yeah, and nail really proved to be something, didn't yeah. he? <laughs> come on. You know, sometimes they don't work out the first overall picks, but yeah. then you also have guys that can come in and single-handedly change a franchise around. You know, you look at Ovechkin, goes first overall in 04. You look at Crosby, goes first overall in 05. I mean, these guys can change a franchise around. McDavid, Austin Matthews. Mm. Come on. So here's something I don't – this is – off topic here, but and this is something I don't know, and I want to ask you guys if see if you guys know. When the NHL makes decisions to change some of these rules and stuff, mm-hmm. do they have a guinea pig uh, league? Is it the AHL that they 
give these rule changes to like a year in advance or something for them to test out. Is that a thing? Yep, it, it definitely is because they tested out the hybrid icing before okay. they brought that into the NHL because they wanted to get rid of those uh, matchups where you have two guys rushing down the ice as fast as they can to try to touch up that puck to avoid an icing. How many times were players injured on that? Mm. So that's why they wanted to bring in the hybrid icing. But before they brought it into the NHL, it was in the AHL for a while and then eventually NHL exhibition games before mm. it became official. You know, test it out, see how players react to it. Plus, uh, linesman as well, because the linesman has to exactly, suddenly yeah. change up his mentality to say, "Oh, wait, I'm not waiting for somebody to touch up that puck anymore. I got to remember, you know, it's it's to the faceoff dot, mm. and who's going to be the clear winner of that race?" Yeah, I had a feeling there, there was definitely a guinea pig uh, league that they were testing this stuff on, yeah. but I just wasn't 100. Yeah, sure, they test so. out things all the time. You know, even sometimes different cameras and mm. all kinds of stuff, different equipment, different jerseys. They test out all kinds of things. Cool. Well, that was a pretty good discussion, guys. Thanks, yeah. sir. Thanks for fielding the discussion. Yeah. Um, thank you guys very much for watching at home. We really appreciate it. Uh, leave your comments down below in the comment section. And uh, hopefully you subscribe if you're uh, new to the channel. If this is your first video, definitely hit that subscribe button. We're releasing videos pretty frequently here. And Justin, I can find you on Twitter. Where? At JustinTheMan87. And you can find me on Twitter at uh, post to post show and on Facebook at post to post show as well. Otherwise, like I said, leave a comment below. And uh, I don't know what our next video will be, but uh, it'll be soon, so keep an eye out for that, and we'll see you in that video. Adios.